So the church has had a lot of influence in New Jersey since the beginning of the church, uh, since the restoration. Um, in one of the chapels, uh, it's called Tom's River, there's a little plaque that says that that particular branch, now correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure in the comments, but if I remember correctly, it had been started by Parley P. Pratt or someone close to Parley P. Pratt. Uh, and so that particular branch had been there for a while. And he also said that he passed by the village of Newark in New Jersey, and he formed a branch called uh, Spring Garden. And this may or may not be the same one, but currently, uh, right now, there's a branch in Newark, the English-speaking branch, and it's called Spring Garden. So definitely there's been missionary activity going on for a while there. As far as the boundaries go, we cover most of New Jersey. We don't cover all of it. Um, like the cities like Camden and Atlantic City that are more to the south, we actually don't cover that. That's a Philadelphia mission, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but anything slightly above that. So we cover probably like two thirds of New Jersey um, or three fourths, somewhere there. And we actually also end up cover, ended up covering one city in, that's actually in New York, which is called New City. So just a tiny sliver of New York there, um, surrounded by Pennsylvania. And then a lot, of our, a lot of the areas in our mission are just by the river, the, I think the Hudson River, which is just on the other side of New York. So. A lot of our areas in the mission have that wonderful New York skyline that you can see uh, if you're close enough. I know that I could see it from Newark, so that was kind of nice. I think uh, it's the New York, it's either the, the New York, New York North or the New York, New York South that are right there. The cover Manhattan and the Temple and everything like that. Then you have the, the Philadelphia and the Pittsburgh missions that are to the other side of us. Most of the English units over there are wards. There are a couple of branches there. Um, and then there's there's actually a fair amount, probably the same number of Spanish units as well. They're mostly branches, but we have a couple of cities where there are wards, and they're very strong, very big wards. Um, as far as stake, stakes goes, there should be about around five stakes and one district, if I'm not wrong. Although we just recently, uh, bar, probably three or four months ago, they added a new stake. So... That was exciting. But so there's just like four or five stakes, five or six stakes, and then a district. And so, yeah, if you serve in English, you probably end up serving a lot of wards, some branches, and the opposite of that in Spanish. Uh, mostly branches, but some wards. And then there's only the one Portuguese branch. And we also have a Korean branch. So that was started, I think, halfway through my mission. So they started calling Korean missionaries there. So in terms of languages, we have English, Spanish, Portuguese and Korean and I know that they also had a little bit of a project with uh, Creole speaking missionaries I think they may have discontinued that for right now, but that was going on for a while uh, I think just for like maybe like a year So there's 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 a lot of Haitians there too as far as the people in New Jersey go uh, My first day my mission president when I was over at his house uh, the mission home He told me that New Jersey is a very strategically located mission because a lot of people from all over the world go to New York and then decide for some reason or other that they don't want to live there, maybe it's too expensive or they don't like the lifestyle, so they move to New Jersey. And maybe they'll still work in New York. A lot of people like commute from New Jersey to New York to work and then come back. But you have people from all over the place. Um, and a lot of people that are just there for work. And so after they're done working for maybe like five, 10 years, however long they want to stay, they go back to their countries or to the cities where they were from. And so it's a place, it's an interesting, place to do missionary work because you know the work that you might be doing might affect people all around the all around the globe uh, just because the message that you share with people they will hopefully then spread um, when they go back to their own home countries and so uh, apart from obviously the the, uh, the Caucasian Americans that live there there's a lot of Hispanics a lot of Hispanics uh, a lot of Mexicans a lot of Dominicans and then, you know, you have uh, a fair amount of Peruvians as well a lot of Ecuador Equatorians and then uh, and then just some different representation from a lot of different places. Uh, from Guatemala, <laughs> a couple uh, of places have a fair amount of people from there. But yeah, just kind of all over the place. And then there's a lot of Haitians, so a lot of people that speak Creole. And then, yeah, you have uh, the Ironbound Newark that has a, a lot of people that speak Portuguese, Brazilians, people from Portugal. Um, and then there's just tiny little pockets of other Portuguese speaking people everywhere else. And the same would be said of, of Korean speaking people. I think that up north in New Jersey, like North Jersey, uh, there's a, a fair amount of people who speak Korean and then there's just like tiny little pockets uh, in the rest of New Jersey. As far as the, the white population goes, I think that 
they're still mostly Catholic. And I think, you know, I think that's a big holdover from like the, maybe the Italian influence. I'm not 100% sure, but there was a lot of Catholics. And then uh, with the rest of the ethnicities that were there, there was a lot of Catholics. And then there's also a lot of Protestants and stuff like that. Um, a fair amount of people also that didn't believe in anything too. So there's a, there's a good enough mix, but I would say that there's a very strong Catholic influence in New Jersey. And this, of course, I think changes with, with every mission president. I know that our motto for the mission was trust, trusting in the Lord that he would help us do his work. And so I think that kind of permeated all the kind of activities that we had as a mission, any type of encounter that we had with our mission president and his wife. Um, and slowly but surely it started permeating, you know, through us as well, that we would trust the Lord enough, trust our companions enough, trust ourselves enough to do what Heavenly Father wanted us to do. One thing that I will say about our mission, it was that it, is the most, it was the most obedient mission in the whole world. Uh, and I know that's a bold claim, but it's true. Um, everyone was obedient, you know, different degrees, I'm sure. Uh, but we were a very obedient mission. We were, we held on to, I think, what our mission president would tell us to do, and we would do our best to try and do it. And that made for a lot of, uh, a great culture. You know, I think a lot, most of the missionaries, if not all of them, were always focused on the work, you know. Um, but we weren't pressured. And that, I thought that was cool because our mission president was about trust. He trusted us to do the right thing. So while obedience was something that happened a lot, it wasn't our main focus. Our main focus was the gospel of Jesus Christ. And obedience, I think, was a, was a byproduct of that. And I think, you know, definitely when you need to focus on obedience a little bit to shore up on it, I think that's important. But I was thankful that the biggest focus in our mission was trusting in the Lord, trusting in Jesus Christ and focusing on His gospel. Because that kind of trickled down to doing everything else the best way possible because we trusted that it was the way that Heavenly Father and the Lord wanted us to do it. Um, and that was something that I think really affected me because uh, it was up to me to make the decision to be obedient. It was up to me to make the decision to, uh, to do the right thing. And because of that, I had a lot of wonderful experiences. I learned a lot on my mission about trying to figure out what it is that Heavenly Father wanted me to do, which is cool because uh, it then made it so that, you know, when our mission president would say something, when general conference would address certain issues, uh, we were more willing to do it because we recognized it as something coming from the Lord. And we trusted in the Lord enough to, to try it out, to experiment with it. For example, if a, if a 70 or an apostle would come and talk to us, we would take his uh, advice uh, to heart to the best of our abilities, because we recognize it as something that's coming, not just from them, but from the Lord. And I thought that was really important in missionary work, is uh, focusing on the Lord. And then, you know, obedience, faith, those things would kind of come, because it was something that comes, I think, naturally from, from wanting to do what the Savior wants us to do. For anyone watching this that doesn't get Alex Poyet to come visit their missions, I'm sorry. Uh, so our mission president's son-in-law is Alex Poyet. So he came to visit the mission uh, for Christmas, twice. He gave some... Uh, uh, he gave like a devotional, he performed for us, and it was really amazing. Uh, and Alex Boy is an amazing singer, an amazing performer, uh, but his, his talks, the things that he said, were also very meaningful to me. I know specifically that uh, some of the things that he said were things that I really needed to hear at that moment in time, things that kind of carried me through some, through some hard times, so I was especially thankful for that. And I'm sure that that kind of happens with any other speaker that comes because, um, you know, they're always inspired. But that was pretty cool that we had Alex Boyer. As far as any other facts from the mission, I do know that New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the United States. And we also have the lowest percentage of, I think, roughly the lowest percentage of members uh, per, I guess, per capita or like in the state, I guess, of the, uh, out of the population, the lowest church attendance um, percentage wise. Uh, and so uh, we had a lot of less actives. We had a lot of members that, you know, were kind of on, in the fringe. Um, and so while we were there, one of our biggest focuses was to, uh, to help the people that were less active as well, to the point where we would make sure that like we would even have that be a, a very important part, just as big as working with investigators, which was also important, uh, and then working with the members too. It's hard being a member in New Jersey. Um, there are a lot of worldly influences coming from New York and just coming from, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know, I don't know where they come from, but there's a lot of worldly influences in New Jersey. Uh, the kind of lifestyle that a lot of people lead there. Um, you know, for example, Jersey Shore, 
I don't know how indicative that is of all of New Jersey, but I know that there's, you know, different things that happen like that, that, you know, make it hard to be a member sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of different influences there that make it hard to uphold your standards a lot of the time. I have a lot of respect for the members in New Jersey because they go through a lot. Uh, they go through a lot of different things and they stay faithful. That being said, it does make the work a little bit more difficult just because a lot of people's lifestyles aren't very conducive to uh, living the gospel 100%. And so it's tricky. Uh, but, you know, with a lot of patience, with a lot of love, the people that decide to come back can do it. Um, and they stay faithful a lot of the times. Um, and so, seeing as we didn't have a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of members, um, you know, uh, it sometimes made the work difficult, but the instances that we had where we were doing Heavenly Father's will and the members were able to help us out made for some very meaningful experiences. And so I think the members in New Jersey are total champions because they have to extra go out of their way to help the missionaries and they're always willing to do so and they uh, and there's always really meaningful experiences to have with them. So I served from 2012 to 2014, April 2012, April 2014. I started my mission uh, in the Portuguese area, Ironbound, Portuguese walking, I guess. Uh, and then I went to Long Branch, Spanish. And then I went to North Branch, Spanish. And from there, I went back to the Portuguese program. And then I went to, um, well, it was Town North English, and then they changed it to Sandy Hook English. And then my final area was Short Hills, East, English speaking. <laughs>